give you a little joy juice. <laughs> oh, thank you. So actually, in fact, we were right that there might be a problem there. We're gonna see. We're gonna, we're gonna have a proof. It's our secret. We're here today in our Buffalo warehouse. There's actually a lot going on today. So we're gonna go walk around and we'll see what's happening. Glasses on, we're entering on. the safety zone. We're here. So Joy actually called me earlier mm -hmm. and said that what they're cutting on the burn table are ears for an attachment that we are gonna be testing on our John Deere excavator, so. For our new series. Yes. Stay for our tuned. new series, coming soon. <laughs> um, so let's go. So these are the ears that yeah. we're having, right? 12, How many? 12? 12 yep. Oh my god. Well, that's a big one, right? Yeah, it's really big. It's, oh. it's been over an hour. Over an hour it's been right now? It's still faster than it would be on the water jug. The water jug oh, yeah. Like... Look at how cool that is. So then once these are done, you guys take them out and then ship them to St. Catherine? Yep, Is that what's right down the part number. That's the most important part. You can get it mixed up and mess up. Right down the part number? Yep, you write down the part numbers and then you ship them off, put them okay. all in one pallet and ship it all in. Cool, okay. So what were to happen, like, if it just stopped right here? Could you start it and pick it back up where it is? Yeah, or would so you have to redo it, basically? Basically, I just hit F1, which will go back, so it'll go back, and then I stop where I think I need to stop it at. Then I let it preheat again and then cut. So okay. that's basically. Well, I guess we'll just have to stay tuned for when they start welding it and attaching it to the actual attachment. And then you'll see us actually use it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's really cool to see the process yeah. before the what Especially goes into it. knowing that like we're gonna be using it is kinda cool. Right, yeah, exactly. I just got the blueprints to all the ears that they just cut. And the one that I colored is one of the ears for the skeleton bucket, which I, we found out that's going to be for a skeleton bucket. And me and Bree are going to go find it and put our names on it and sign it. And we're not going to tell anyone. We're not going to tell anyone. It's our secret. That is the stack we currently have to look through. Okay. Oh my god. I can't even. I don't even think we can move these. <laughs> we have to do this secretly, and I don't even think we can move them. Our secret mission turned into a not so secret mission, but it's okay. <laughs> we need help. <laughs> we need help. Thank you. Sorry. All right. Okay. Sharpie. Right. Oh, it is hot still. <laughs> it is hot still. Oh yeah. Get a little heart. Get a little <laughs> close up on. Look at her, Megan. Yeah, it's All right, it's your turn. Oh my God. Ah yeah yeah, careful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so cute. That's gonna One be on the bucket, on the attachment. Yep. And now it gets chipped off and painted over. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're not actually gonna be able to see it, but like we know it's there. We know that it's there, and we know that we did it. But okay. It between us. Yeah, no one's supposed to know. <laughs> Besides the two people that we asked for help. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, bye. Bye. And that's giving it its threads, Mike. Yes. Oh, okay. No, that's just cool. That's it's my first time seeing how threads are made like this. It's cool. We'll uh, check this with our fitting. Nice. And on to the next one. Yep. <laughs> I mean, Mike, you've been doing this for how long? Too long to remember for my, <laughs> for my young age. <laughs> so I'm going to let you take over here and be the captain of the ship. Okay, okay. You're just going to come down and make an impression by hand using this. Uh -huh. Come down a little above the workpiece and then engage everything. Do a stop and pull up. Pull up and then that moves. Turn off the speed, give it a little wipe. I'm just going to check the depth with the scale. 
Right on the money, Anthony. Right on the money. All right, cool, cool. Well done. Well done. Just place it. Oh, yeah. That you can feel your relatively center and then come down on the top. You're all set. I'll give you a little joy juice. <laughs> oh, thank you. do a bit of a demo here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that should be it. Give it a shake that seems tight enough. All done. Oh, nice. All done. <laughs> and the driver card is one that, unfortunately, when they hooked it up, they fried it and it's, it's pretty easy to do. So we sold him another one. Uh, we did give him a deal. Uh, and this time, the deal was that we were gonna set it up for them. So we set this whole thing up on the test bench and we actually didn't charge them for that, but we did charge them for the second, uh, for the second driver car, yeah. And now we shouldn't have any problems. Shouldn't. <laughs> shouldn't. So we're gonna start running a test on this one. We already made sure everything's right, so now we're gonna run an official test with a video, like you're taking a video, and then we're gonna run the parameters, we're gonna see, we're gonna have a proof. They want it set at 16 horsepower, 16.5, so we can see the horsepower. And the Pmax is set for 2500 PSI, so it'll cut down at 2500. So no flow, 2500. So that's your P-Max. I'll show how I can control my flow. So that's my feedback signal. That's my feedback input and my feedback. So see, I'm following my input command and my feedback command. So that's pretty good. And I'm able to control my flow electronically here. When we did the initial test, when we look there on customer pump, customer card was flickering all around. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, so that was, the card was bad. This is a new one he bought. This one's working good in our shop. Yeah. Pump's working fine, tested good. It should work perfect for him. Uh, the story behind this one is, uh, this is the, the customer that was, it was a new application. They were replacing a very old pump, uh, like something from the 70s. So we gave them this one here, but they had a lot of trouble setting it up. Today, we're just setting up the driver card for them. And on this one, it has this LVDT. So this is a linear position indicator. And the reason it's linear on this one is because it's attached to a servo piston. You've seen that in some of our videos. Uh, the servo piston just uh, basically goes along a, a tube as opposed to an RVDT which is rotary and that's because it's on the swash plate so it's it's detecting like this here in an RVDT and in this LVDT it's detecting like like this here in this position uh, it's actually st connected on a uh, on a servo piston and the servo piston has a certain contour in, in here all this other fancy stuff a displacement control and pressure control, proportional pressure control. Here's the displacement, here's the pressure. What's this one here? Uh, differential? Differential, yes. Differential, so the, oh, the, the delta. So d displacement, two solenoids, pressure. Here is just a pressure sensor. Uh, this is it, this is the assembly that they made here. And uh, we didn't really like how it was quoted at the beginning, which is why we have done all this work. But it's good, we learned a lot about this. Probably got a customer for life after this too. Here we have a proportional uh, valve, directional control valve. This one is a D91 FBE. This here is just a subplate. We just have it because it would normally go on a manifold, but we need to hook it up with lines. So we connect a subplate to it, hook the lines up to here. So this is the, the proportional part, and this is what's going to uh, test it or run it. It's called the uh, Parker EX M05 Valve Master and just allows us to produce uh, nice reports and so forth that look very professional, uh, just like Parker would want us to look like. And over here, somebody just told me that they were using this, they were hooking up this motor to test for the leakage, which I thought was genius. We have flow controls on there, but maybe at the really low, low flow rate, they're not as accurate. 
So what they do is they hook this up to see, and they just see if it starts to spin a lot at all. But I don't know, I don't know much about it. I'm going to learn more, or we're going to learn more. Uh, so yeah, basically what I was told by Noble is that we have to check at which voltage the motor starts to spin, which is uh, important to the, the function of it. So are you, are you centering it? Is that what you're doing? Well, so right now it's centered. Um, it has, according to the specs in the literature, at one volt, either way, it should start spinning. So if you, if you go up slowly. So all we're doing is just making sure that it gets back to its manufacturing parameters. Or that it's working how it should, yes. Yeah. So you can see that about yeah, 0.9 volts, it starts to spin. And is there, so is there a certain percentage you have to be within that? 10% is the So you, you're bang on. You go back to zero yeah. here. Okay, so now you're going back up. And we want to see. Oh, it's already spinning on that one. That's spinning at, at 0.7. So 30% away. So that's a bit of a concern, isn't it? I think we're going to get some more people along this one here. What do you think? Yeah, I'm not the expert, that's for sure. Well, nobody's, nobody's going to say they're an expert. <laughs> Anybody who knows what they're talking about never calls themselves an expert because it implies liability. <laughs> so you always, always just say you're a specialist. <laughs> here, I'm going to leave that right there. Okay, let, me go, let me go grab somebody else here. Okay. Ideally, do you want to spin at, at zero volts? Like, when do you want it to spin? At one volt. At one volt. Yeah. Okay. So if it spins a little early, that's not too bad. But like if it's spinning at, 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 at zero, that's a problem, right? So it should not move between uh, plus, and, plus or minus one volt. But if it's moving at, at 0.3, isn't that a problem? It's not good, yeah. That's not good. It's not good. Because yeah. we, we, we've had it moving at... It was going a little bit low, yeah. Like might indicate a leakage, like a slow leakage. Okay. All right, so actually, in fact, we were right that there might be a problem there. All right. Well, let's take a look though. So we got this nice motor on here. So we're at 0 0.01, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0.5, 0.6. Oh, this is looking good now. 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0. 9. So point 0.9 is okay, so that's, that's perfect then. That's okay, that's good. All right, now I think what happens is that once it starts moving, it breaks that tear. Yeah. And then it becomes like more of a dynamic friction. Yep. And so when we go down, it goes, it still continues to turn at a very low rate. I think that's what's happening. So it's really just when it's going from zero up to one. That's yep. time about right? Yeah. So we like this then. Yeah. So what else does you have to test? The other way? Yeah, the other way. All right, let's just do that. So we want to make sure it comes back to zero and it stops. And now we're going to go the other direction. Point two, three, four, five. Negative? Negative, yeah. Negative six. Negative 0.7, oh, negative 0.8, negative 0.9, and now it's turning. All right, so it's perfect. That's good. We've spent our whole lives behind desks, and now here we are, behind the controls of a 20-ton excavator. We've never driven one before, we've never done anything like this. No heavy machinery, no manual labor. But this summer, we're taking on the challenge. Demolish concrete, clear this land, and do it all with zero training. No excuses, no instructions, just us and the machine. Can we pull it off, or is this going to be the biggest disaster we've ever gotten ourselves into? Let's, Let's find, find out. out. We look good. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes. <laughs>